Regarding the liturgy, uh, somebody who is um, sharp enough to observe said, it's not really morning prayer, um, strictly speaking, and it's not um, Eucharist. So we must have made some decisions along the way to decide that this is the kind of liturgy we wanted to do. And uh, so I wanted to know just a couple of things about that um, to give you a little sense of, of um, how this, um, we hope, is the kind of worship that is truly worshipful for everyone. Uh, first and really importantly to us, uh, we had to make the decision early on what uh, format to use um, since you can't be here. And, um, and what we really wanted to do was create a kind of worship context where uh, people could see one another joining in. Uh, to us, that was just critically important. Um, it's one thing to, to put on camera the priests working in the chancel and doing the things that they would normally do and then putting it up on the website and letting people see that any time. That is kind of a performance and it can be interesting, but we didn't feel that it really um, engaged people in worship. And um, you know, part of the great delight is to be able to see the squares pop up here and there and know the people who are presently with us in the immediacy of the moment and um, as we've gotten the information back, uh, for many of you, you have the opportunity as the service goes on to watch other people react. You don't just see the back of their heads anymore. Um, you can actually see uh, the look on their faces and how they are participating. And that has its own kind of grace. So um, this isn't the ideal format, but it's the one that we feel um, most includes all of you. And that's really important to us because we have to feel when we're here in this space that in a very real way, you are with us. And um, so that was our first decision. Uh, secondly, then um, we needed to think about what liturgy to do. And um, there's an article coming out in The Voice about um, sacraments and um, our understanding of them in the Episcopal Church and why, for instance, we are not trying to do Eucharist um, week by week. And I've said a couple of things of that in, in the past, but one of the things that I want to highlight is that um, the Eucharist is um, at least two things. One, it's a ritual. And secondly, it's a sacrament. And we could carry on with Eucharist as a ritual. And you could see us going through the prayers and the motions, have everything on the table, and then leave it at that and move on to the post-communion prayer. And that, I understand, has a certain kind of importance for people that they can feel that they are ritually engaged. This is their habit. This is what they expect. This is what they love to hear. But what that does is it precludes your absence physically precludes the Eucharist from being a sacrament. Because as I try to point out in the article in The Voice, when we talk about the sacrament, we talk about Christ being truly present in, in the worship itself. And sometimes people try to locate that in the bread or in the wine. But I think that in the Episcopal Church, our understanding of real presence of Christ is that Christ is present in the interaction between us when you come to the rail and when a priest comes up to you and what is the only thing between me as a priest and you as a parishioner is this host which is the presence of Christ when it is connected between the two of us and corporately amongst all of us and absent that not having you here, not being able to do the distribution. It felt like we couldn't do the sacrament and we wanted to keep that holy. And as one of the professors at General said a few weeks ago, it puts us in a place where we are somewhat impaired. We can't do what we'd like to do. Uh, but knowing that impairment, hopefully when we get back together, that Eucharistic moment will have much more power and grace than we may often uh, attribute to it. The, um, the second decision we made when we decided that we couldn't do simply the Eucharistic liturgy was that we didn't want 
Sunday to be like every other day of the week. And, and as you know, we, we are distributing morning prayers or we do the service of morning prayer um, on Monday through Saturday. And Sunday ought to be different. So when um, Michael and Joanne and I sat down and, and talked about uh, what we can do, uh, we decided that we wanted to do the liturgy of the word from the Eucharistic service to give everyone that sense of Sunday and the beauty of that, the different expression of that. And that um, then after that, we needed to find a way to conclude that wasn't going into the great Thanksgiving and the sacrament, um, but it could engage people. And so we took in some prayers from morning prayer and wanted to finish with that as a way of, of bringing the service to um, a beautiful conclusion uh, with, without having to try to simulate something that we can't do otherwise. So we hope that, that those prayers are meaningful to you as we try to put them forward. And, and one of the things that we do, you may have noticed, it's Eastertide. So um, the prayers of the people are somewhat shifted from um, petitions straightforwardly into prayers of thanksgiving. And then we add the petitions for those who are sick, which is very important at this time. And we add petitions for those who have died. Um, but then we can conclude with um, the, the, the thanksgiving from the morning prayer service. And we hope that that's um, a, a good and, and um, uh, it's, a, it's a way of doing worship that has integrity, which is the most important thing for us. And that you can feel that as you participate with us. Um, the third part about that, by the way, very important, we had to make a decision about how to incorporate music. Uh, and we, we are blessed with a huge catalog of recordings that we can draw from, from music that was recorded in the worship of this um, church, in this space, with our choirs. And we felt that giving people the opportunity to hear again all of those voices in the moment of worship was so much to be preferred over against having um, some um, music played that doesn't have voices uh, where you can't imagine yourself back in this context and know that there was, a, there was a time when all these voices were together singing out these songs. Uh, it, is, it is really the highlight of our experience of worship here in the church to be able to stand here and, and hear that music and then hear a whole congregation. It's, um, it's such a sense of who we are, who we have been and who we will be. And um, so we wanted to be able to bring that in different ways through anthems and hymns uh, and um, place them differently in the, in the liturgy so that you can feel that this is week by week um, our, our best attempt at being able to be really powerfully present together. So um, that's, that's what I wanted to bring to you and, and I'd be happy to um, answer any of your questions if you want to, to sort of type them out in chat and if, uh, if you don't have any questions, we'll just blow open the doors and you can speak to one another.